Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And uh, yeah, the picture you're seeing on your screen right now uh, is an older picture, but it is something that has concerned me for some time. I've mentioned this before to you. I don't know if it's on Patreon or if it was here on Israeli News Live on our YouTube channel, but it's, it's an issue I need to discuss regardless because I am very concerned we're going to head right into a new world order and people are going to be duped into believing that this is God's true miracle. That Trump and Netanyahu could end up coming back into power. Of course, Netanyahu has come back into power. I warned of this uh, back when they both uh, came, they, they fell from their thrones. And I have stated before that I believe there is a great possibility that both men may return. In fact, one of the president's advisors that uh, just did not believe that Trump will ever be back. And I said to him, I believe that he very well may. Uh, I've literally read Trump Jr., Donald Trump Jr.'s tweets, excuse me, not tweets, but text, direct text to one of the former president's advisors there, speaking about how that his father doesn't really want to run, but he feels he's the only one that can save the nation. Well, I wanted to bring some information together to show you why I think this. And then also, a little bit at the end, we'll touch on Obama again. Because in some of the recent messages, I actually even loaded one of our Patreon messages for you guys to be able to see about the path that they're paving right now for Obama to take uh, possibly, not saying that they will, but possibly could be really become an acting president of the United States. As crazy as that may sound, uh, and I know that a lot of people believe that 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 uh, that Obama is the Antichrist. We're going to talk about those things, but let me first get into this whole issue here about the twin messiahs. Where does it come from? Uh, this is from the website, the city of uh, of Luz, the Josephic Messiah, uh, and what they call the twin messiahs. And it says here, the Josephic Messiah helped accelerate the Messianic era by unraveling the riddle of the twin messiahs, the Josephic and Davidic messiahs, according to the secret teachings of the Goan of Vilna. Now, the Goan of Vilna is somebody you really want to pay attention to right here because he is the famed uh, rabbinic teacher uh, from back in the 1700s that actually prophesied of the AI era, things like that. New World Order, clearly uh, a very diabolical plan of the coming events that are going to happen in the world. Let me just share some thoughts that they have here. One should be prepared, as the explanation presented here of the Messiah has little to do with Christian and Western cultural understanding, yet this phenomena is precisely so. Hideous, excuse me, actually, that, maybe that's hideous, I don't know. And unrecognizability are part of the essence of the Jose Josephic Messiah. He is a master of the art of disguise. Yes, hidiness. This is also the Torah's intention in the verse. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Quoting from Genesis 42, 8. Uh, they go on to say, the other half, <clears throat> which is more familiar to everyone. Uh, let me just read the whole paragraph on that one. What makes the Josephic Messiah such a complex subject? is that it is only one half of a larger picture. Now, as I'm reading this to you, you have to understand this is Judaism's belief of the Messiah. They believe in what they call a, a twin Messiah doctrine, that there is a Messiah of Joseph and that there is a Messiah of David. And those are the two different messiahs that they believe that will come. They actually get this idea from Zechariah's prophecy of, uh, I believe it's Zechariah chapter 9, where the king comes unto thee as he is triumphed, he is victorious, lowly, riding upon an ass, even upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Um, he seems to be more gentler. That's the one role. And then, of course, Zechariah 14, where it says that the living water shall go forth from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea in the summer and the winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall the Lord be one and his name one. They consider this to be the Davidic Mashiach. Uh, and they may also consider uh, that the, 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 the portion here of uh, when, we're, when we're reading in, uh, I believe this is uh, Zechariah chapter 12, 
that I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. They shall look unto me because they have thrust him through. They shall mourn for him as one that mourned for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And that day there should be a great mourning in Jerusalem in the mourning of uh, Hadad Rimon in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, apart, their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, their wives apart, the Shemites apart, their wives apart, and it goes on down to all the families that remain. I used to take the stand that this had not been fulfilled because having the idea that the house of Israel had never returned yet. Now, it is obvious that after the ransacking of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, uh, in 70 AD, and uh, well, no, I'm sorry, that was the Romans, but going back before that time, that, uh, well, well, actually more, we would have to say that the Romans were the ones that actually caused the the destruction of the records uh, in 70 AD. So therefore, Jews would not even know what, what tribe they belonged to. But there's also a, a belief, too, that that happened under the Babylonians when they came down to the destroying of the records. So therefore, I think this is why it talks about the families. Um, Nonetheless, the house of Israel, we find out in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, that the house of Israel is in fact back in the state of Israel once again when Jesus Christ is here on the scene. So clearly, this particular passage was fulfilled back when they thrust Jesus through and they saw him and they were able to weep over him. So... That's where we. That's what we have there. Now, so let me back up then, going back into this idea. Like I said, it is a Jewish idea of this twin messiahs, and they believe it because they see two different sides of the Mashiach there. One is, you know, coming back conquering, and the other comes and is dying. Uh, so in that regard there, they have somewhat the picture right, but a little bit distorted. So... And please forgive me. I don't know how much of this you guys can hear, but I got a little dog here, a little puppy here, chewing on one of my books here. Not very good. Anyway, let's continue on. So the Josephic Messiah is a much complex subject is that only half of the larger picture. The other half, which is more familiar to everyone, is known as the Davidic Messiah. The Davidic King Messiah, or simply the Messiah. Together they are known in Zohar and in the Goan of Vilna's commentaries as the Train Mashachim. The Zohar is Aramaic term for two messiahs, the Josephic Messiah and Davidic Messiah. The Josephic Messiah between these two cosmological forces that forms the hidden landscape upon which the drama of the entirety of the world's history unfolds, it is this reason that I have chosen to translate the term as the Twin Messiahs. It must be emphasized, he goes on to write, and that in the language of the Torah masters and the Kabbalah, which, by the way, I don't agree with Kabbalah, I don't agree with Zohar, I'm wanting you to see this as the historical writings that they have written. So please understand, as we quote this, I definitely do not believe in Kabbalah, I do not believe in the the Tanakh, not excuse me, not the Tanakh, but the uh, the Talmud. I don't believe in the Talmud. I don't believe in any of these uh, extra books that they have there. But in order to understand what is in the mind of these rabbis, you have to kind of go into this. So it says, it must be emphasized that the language of the Torah masters and Kabbalah sages and appellations of the Josephic Messiah and the Davidic Messiah refer to much more than the historical Joseph and David. These two messianic forces were in existence, potentially and manifestly, not only before the historic Joseph, viceroy of Egypt, and David, king of Israel, but even before creation. (laughs) This can get nuts, guys, I'm telling you. Rather, Joseph and David are specific constellations of forces of the twin messiahs incarnating, as it were, in historical time and space. The historic Joseph and David then uh, reciprocally become prototypes for the twin messiahs from whence we derive many of the subtle yet crucial details of the phenomenon of the twin messiahs. So there you have it, right? We get a couple of other things that I think is important. This is, I, I, I kind of highlighted this for you because a lot of times if you listen to uh, 
uh, rabbis, even though they might speak English, they'll use certain Hebrew phrases, phrases very frequently, and the word tikkun or tikkun olam is one that is very often used. So I wanted you to see what this word means. The word tikkun means re a recitification or, or mending. So tikkun olam is the mending of the world, olam being that's another expression for world. And Kabbalah Tikkun also refers to process of elevation and transformation. Goes on to say, as Tikkun is then its redemption from its captive state, the one who performs that act of restoration is said to be its redeemer or goel. That's another expression you'll hear in Hebrew a lot and people that speak English and add Hebrew verbiages to it. The goel. Goel is a redeemer, which is another quality of the name for Messiah. As we shall see, the Torah teaches that a certain type of breakage or primordial fall took place, which affected the continues to affect the entirety of creation. Therefore, the Messiah is simply the one who is responsible for the restoration or the tikkun and the redemption of creation. Now, as we look at that, there, 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 that is the truth. The whole thing is, and they're going to talk about Adam being the one that fell. Sure, Adam fell. It did bring the world under the bondage that we are in, and this is why we needed a redeemer. But a redeemer to redeem, or the Messiah that would do the kinsman work uh, uh, as a redeemer, like the case of Boaz, that is to bring something back to what it was. Now, in the case of Boaz, Boaz never brought... Uh, well, he does bring Ruth back to her estate by marrying her daughter, her daughter-in-law, but uh, but it, it it that's it's really to to restore back that rightful place. And so, yeah, in that case, there Boaz was a beautiful type of a kinsman redeemer. Okay, so we go on to see here. At present, we can understand the need for the first type of Messiah. One will restore the world to its former state. Now, this is the doctrine there. Turns, returns the world to its former state. Now, I kind of disagree in here because Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. So keep that in mind. But where does the second type fit into picture? When was the world so complete that it needed only to be elevated to a higher and higher levels of completion and perfection? The answer is the Garden of Eden. When Adam, Harishon, uh, the original higher dimensional consciousness being composed of both masculine and feminine was created, he was placed into a higher dimensional reality that was essentially perfect. This is where you see a lot of the, um, what do they call that, that they express that in, is that um, um, transhumanism, uh, the, basically one male and female being one. And it's not quite, that would, that would really be a, really a perversion of what the truth really is, but that's something that they get into. Um, Rishon means, by the way, means first. So Harishon at the first is what that literally would mean. The Hebrew verbiage is being used there. Going on, though, it says, though, for, uh, let's see, everything had to collapse into a, I, I want to point this out because I thought it's interesting how they use this, some of this verbiage in this here. It says, after the proverbial eating from the higher dimensional fruit of the tree of knowledge of duality, reality and Adam's mission radically changed. The fall of man was cosmic, shattering an essential rip that re reverberated through the entire fabric of creation. Adam now had a new task to perform for uh, through his actions, everything had collapsed into a lower world order. Isn't that interesting? They want to bring about a new world order, but they have to talk about how we went into a lower world order. I find that I find the verbiage interesting in light of what the objective is on a global scale right now. So the new mode of tikkun was therefore required. The tikkun of uh, recertification, restoration, and purification. All right. Uh, also, we want to bring out this here, and then we're going to jump to some other things here. Thus, Adam, presently wearing the form of worldly humanity, is now two steps removed from God's true intent. First, we, as humanity, have to fix up what has been shattered. Then we have to take up where Adam left off and finish the original work of elevation and transformation. Where there was originally intended to be the singular mode of tikkun, now there are two modes where there was originally intended to be one redeemer for all of creation, now there are two. One of each mode of tikkun. These two modes of tikkun, okay, or redemption, are referred to in Torah literature as train Mashiach Meshachim. 
the twin messiahs. Adam had, in effect, split his own self in two persons. Adam is the twin messiahs. So, as crazy as it may sound, that's why they come up with the doctrine, right? So this is basically where it's at. I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link for you guys uh, about this so you can read a little bit more about how this works here. But uh, but yeah, it gets pretty, pretty wacko, right? So we're going to get into Trump and Netanyahu now. And I want to show you how that this path is coming back. And but but quite frankly, maybe before I even go into that, one of the things that I think is important to bring out though too is this issue about Obama. Because I did this video just the other day, and I actually released it here on YouTube, so I'll I'll quickly share that with you so you're aware of that. Of course, we're in my Stephen Benoon account, so let's switch that account. Let's go over to Israeli News Live. Uh, all right, we've popped that up right here. Let's see, get to your channel. All right, here we go, and peek into Patreon, Obama's way to power, all right, this video yeah, right here Stephen. is where I had just been given some information that there are people in the White House uh, that are working on trying to bring Obama back into power, they're looking for ways and avenues to do it. And of course, one of the things that was said to me that they may end up doing is that if we end up having this, uh, the fuel crisis of diesel, in the, in which we only have like two and a half weeks left of diesel fuel reserves, Obama was trying to secure that with the Saudis. That fell through. Uh, and I think all that's all staged. And then uh, Biden was saying publicly, well, we're sending all of our diesel to Europe. That's why we have the shortages here. That's because we are on the front lines in Ukraine right now in this battle, and they're not telling the American public what's really going on. But nonetheless, um, that's why we have to send diesel, because most of our equipment runs on diesel, right? So we have to send our diesel over there to be able to keep this war going. Um, and the thing is, though, as I was told, that that would bring about a, 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 not only the strike of the railroad companies, but if they don't have diesel, the railroad companies can't run. Then the trucks can't run. So before long, there's not going to be any trucks, no, no, nothing moving. The economy would end up going into a tailspin. Uh, we would see a collapse of the economy as a result. And then they would have to be forced to go into martial law as a result of that, of the economic collapse. I was told that would be the one way that could pave a way. They could say that Biden just was not capable of running the country and that they could literally bring that in that Biden and Harris were incapable, incapable of running the country, and thus they could appoint Obama. Said so under martial law, you can do a whole lot more than what you can, cannot do. I think that could possibly happen as a result because they want you to believe that Obama is the Antichrist. To me, it's not that he is the Antichrist. They want you to think he's the Antichrist. Because why? If they get you convinced that Obama is the Antichrist, then guess what? You would then accept possibly that Netanyahu and Trump are the saviors of the world. All right, let me play this little clip here. It's kind of an interesting little clip that I got here on Obama and Biden and Kamala Harris here. Listen to this here. Dementia at its finest. Up, Feels like the good old days. It's been a while. I confess, uh, I heard some changes have been made by the current president since I was last here. Uh, apparently Secret Service agents have to wear aviator glasses now. The Navy mess uh, has been replaced by Baskin Robbins. Now, it's a joke, but you ever wonder if it's not a subliminal message, right? Again, if they do it, though, in my opinion, I know there's a lot of you guys that believe that Obama is the Antichrist, and I, I'm not here to take that away from anybody. I don't, I don't really know. I just don't know. But I can certainly see to where they want the world to know or to believe he is. Like I said, because why? It will pave the way. 
Now, before I bring this next information out, I want to remind you of what it says in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Let me, let's back up to verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Now that was actually in response to uh, there's great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of, of the world time, nor ever shall be. Uh, pray that your flight, let's see, oh uh, gosh. As actually, earlier on, we find about the wars, the rumors of wars, the pestilence, and the pestilence, of course, are, you know, it's not bugs, okay? It's the kind of bug that lives in your body. That's the kind of pestilence it's talking about, all right? Anyway, we'll just leave it like that. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. One of the reasons why I find this interesting is, is because there is a diabolical plan by the fallen ones to eradicate the human race from this earth. Just a little side note for you there. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or Lo, here is the Messiah, right? Here is the Christ. All right, so let's remind you of that. The Josephic Messiah, the Davidic Messiah. So if anybody else tells you, oh, 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 oh wow, here, here's the Messiah, or there is the Messiah, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ. Notice that plural right there. And you know, I used to think that it's kind of like in the case of, uh, of the Jewish people, right? We're always, you always have in the Jewish people, oh gosh, come on, Steve. I wanted to be able to catch it. There it is right there. Right there at the beginning, false Christ, plural. I used to think of that more along the line that you're always going to have somebody come along and saying that they're the Messiah. Even in Judaism, they've had, I don't know, more than a dozen Messiahs over the years, right? Could it actually be referencing then when it says false Christ, plural, could it be representing this duality right here, the twin Messiahs that is verbiaged right here in this article here, also uh, purported by the villain of Goan, right? And then in that case there, and I'm going to show you the references where Jewish writers have accepted both these men's as men as messiahs, Christ, okay? So keep that in mind. There shall be false Christ and false prophets. Why false prophets? declaring that these are the messiahs. Think about it, right? Think about them. And, 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 you know, a lot of times, whether it be the evangelical teachers of today that support and stand behind these two men, and, and listen, I, I'm not here bashing President Trump or bashing Prime Minister Netanyahu. They've ser they serve their purpose. Um... You know, my uncle actually once said about when it comes to Trump, he said, although I didn't like his narcissistic characteristics, he said, I appreciated his policies. I did as well to some extent, but I also know that he was very much used by the Jewish elite. All right. I hate to say it, but he was. So the false prophets. All right. Where are those false prophets? And let's take a look at it then, because we actually have false prophets out there already. This here is Israel 365, right? Netanyahu holding the keys for the Messiah. Right, here we go. Before Netanyahu returned to Israel in 1988 to join Likud, the Rebbe gave him advice which proved to be at least partially prophetic. You will fight with 119 people presaging the coalition troubles that are plaguing the prime minister to this day. Right? He goes on, he goes on to say, the Lubavitch Rebbe was not only a prominent Sadiq righteous man with high expectations for Netanyahu, Rabbi Yitzhak uh, Kaduri, which many people know him. He's another one that got really made famous uh, of his prediction of the coming of the Messiah. One of the most influential Sephardic spiritual leaders of the century passed away in 2006 at the age of 106. Met with Netanyahu in 1997 during his first term as prime minister. Rabbi Kaduri whispered a long message into the politician's ear. Rabbi Shemel, Shemeli, a follower of Rabbi Kaduri, revealed that Kaduri had always maintained that Netanyahu would 
serve a very long time, and after his term in office, the Messiah would arrive. Now, he actually believed as a different guy, I guess. Before his death, Kaduri had said he expected the Jewish Messiah to arrive soon and that he had met him a year earlier. Hmm, boy, that, that's an interesting, right? He had met him a year earlier, but he expected him to arrive soon. Could he actually have been referring to Netanyahu himself? I mean, think about it, right? <laughs> wow. I mean, you got, it makes you wonder. Anyway, in May, Breaking Israel News reported the opinion of Rabbi Levi Suduri noted the many parallels between the current prime minister and Jonathan, the son of biblical King Saul. Suduri suggested that Netanyahu is serving the function of Mashiach ben Yosef, Messiah from the house of Joseph, the first half of the two-stage messianic process. All right, false prophets. Jesus Christ is the Messiah, period. No other one. I, I know some people, they, they've been asking me. I've actually gotten some emails about this. Brother Steve, why don't you use the word Yeshua any longer? Um, I, I, occasionally, I will use the word Yeshua. It's not what was actually used in biblical times. I have actually found that documentation. I've spoke about that before. Um, that they didn't actually call him Yeshua. It's very, very similar. Um, uh if I remember right, it was Isus, is what is the way they called Jesus at that time. I have to go back and double check on that. It's been a while since I've actually looked at that. But uh, I'll, I'll do a specific message on that a little bit later. But anyway, Mashiach ben Yosef is a practical, mundane process that includes the gathering of the exiles and building up the land of Israel. The second stage of Mashiach ben David, Messiah from the house of David, is a miraculous process which includes the reestablishment of the Davidic dynasty and the completion of the third temple. What? Rabbi Sidri explained that of the reincarnation of Jonathan and the manifestation of Mashiach ben Yosef, Netanyahu is paving the way for the more trans transcendent Mashiach ben David, who will immediately follow. Now, we already know that Netanyahu just won the prime minister, right? He just won. He got into the office there. I want to share that with you real quick here before we go on. Benjamin Netanyahu wins another shot at leading Israel as Lapid concedes. All right, so here he is, Wall Street Journal. He just won. Blew the socks off of everybody. And I've been saying this all along. I believe that they're going to both come back. Now, if Trump is not the one that comes back, the one that I do believe that would come back would be uh, DeSantis, uh, let's see, presidential 2024. And he may actually run as a VP for Trump as well, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, Trump mocked Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finally de, uh, de, 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 what? debating a nickname, Ron DeSanctimonious. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. I, I just saw their picture together. Let me go back over here. DeSantis, proud Florida is where, wo uh, where woke goes to die. Chris accuses him of focusing on 2024 presidential run. All right, so yes. There is a good possibility that DeSantis could run. I know there's a lot of people that want him to run. My concern with DeSantis, and I know a lot of people love DeSantis. There's a, there's a lot of good things that the man has done, all right? So I don't want to play down the good things that he did. But DeSantis signed a Florida legislation in Israel. Let me just pull that up for you. That's one of the biggest, uh, biggest, biggest, major uh, mistakes I have ever seen in my life of, of any governor or politician, period. During Florida cabinet meeting held in Israel, Governor DeSantis signs bill to curb anti-Semitism. And he did it in Israel. All right. What does that tell me, though, about Ron DeSantis? It tells me that he is underneath the New World Order, and Israel is definitely going to be the head of the New World Order, and he's signing U.S. legislative process, Florida legislative uh, uh, documents in the country of Israel. You know, the fact that he were to sign a legislation, whether I would agree or not agree, um, is one thing, and doing it in the state of Florida, nothing wrong with that. But when you go and you're signing it in another country, you're now 
showing that you are subservient to that other country. That's that's a major red flag for me. So he could actually end up being the guy that takes Trump's place if Trump doesn't get in. So I kind of keep that option open. So let's watch for that. But as of right now, my focus is going to take us back to Netanyahu and Trump. All right. So remember, the immediately following Netanyahu is supposed to be Mashiach ben David. So here we go. The Trump King David connection and how it connects with Abraham's covenant. Again, Israel 365. Talk about a false prophet publication with their false prophet Bible. There's so many Christians are, 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 are touting this. I actually have it. Gosh, where do I have it at? I know I have it up here somewhere. Here we go. Israel 365. Here we go. Right here for you. There, there you go. Right? And the thing is, it's nothing about Jesus, but it's Hebrew. I got the Hebrew English version. I wanted to see what it was like. My wife actually ordered this here. But they do have Talmudic quotations in it. Sure they do. Uh, they have a lot of different quotations that are totally Talmudic, and they're they're pushing this for you as some great Christian Bible. Hmm. What what nonsense! All right. And so look, I, I have it. I, I have the complete Talmud right here. I have the I'm sorry Talmud down here. I, this is the Midrash, uh, and this is the Zohar. I carry it all. So I can research, right? So anyway, Trump, King David connection. Let's see what they say here. King David also had overcome great opposition in order to establish his kingship. Rabbi Berger told Breaking Israel News, Trump's connected to that. This cycle was completed with the presidential recognized Jerusalem as the true capital of the Jewish people, just as King David did. What do you know? What do you know? Just read the article. Just read the article. Okay, and to save time, I'm going to kind of push forward though, right? All right, so Netanyahu won, and then Benjamin Netanyahu went in Israel, the rise of the religious Zionism. This is important. I want you to read here. Mr. Ben Giver's surging popularity ensured that Benjamin Netanyahu's block won an outright victory. Now, if you know anything about him, I'm going to tell you about Ben Giver in just a minute there. He is notorious. Uh, Hate hates Palestinians with a passion. All right, uh, he, I forget the guy's name that he had a poster up that actually went in and killed like twenty five Palestinians in a massacre one time. He used to keep the guy's picture up in his house from what they've reported on him. But anyway, it says paving the way for talks that began Sunday to form what political an an analysts uh, say would be Israel's most right wing and religious government in its history. Although Mr. Netanyahu's Likud party is largely secular. All his political allies come from religious parties, with the religious Zionist alliance being the largest. The prospects that Mr. Ben Giver, who was convicted in 2004 of incitement to racism and belonging to the terrorist organization, could serve in a high government position shows the growing political strength of Israel's religious ultra-national Jews. You know, I mean, I mean, think about it, right? I mean... For a Jewish guy to get convicted in Israel for racism, you got to be pretty low down. You know, I mean, because believe me, the Israeli government is definitely does not care about Palestinians. You know, I mean, the Palestinians, and, and that's what's really sad, 50% of your Palestinians are really crypto-Jewish. They are really the true Jews descended from the Roman times. Or Israelites, I should better say, part of the house of Israel, etc. But they're so looked down upon. So looked down upon. Yeah, sure, sure, there's many of them that are Jordanians, many of them are Egyptians that are there as well. That's your other 50%. But half of them, and I never will forget it. I, I my own doctor in Florida one time I was there and he had a girl that worked his pharmacy department there. I was talking to her, she was a Palestinian girl, very nice girl. Uh, always had nice, cordial conversations. And one day she said to me, she said, you know, Steve, what really gets me about the Jewish people in Israel is that they don't realize that we are actually Jews ourselves. And I said, you're a Palestinian. She said, oh, yeah, she said, oh, which I already knew that. And I said, but you say you're Jewish as well? She said, my family, she said, we're Christians, but our family, our whole tradition is that we are descendants of the original Israelites that lived in the land, that when the Romans sacked the land, our family were farmers and stuff, and we were allowed to stay there. 
I'm like, it was such an honor for me to be able to meet someone like that. And, and you know, but the hatred and stuff is just terrible. Anyway, let's go on. Ben Giver, Israel's powerful extreme right leader. Here he is right there. There's this picture for you. The man that hates the Palestinians with a passion says here, with his round glasses, white, uh, white kippa placed crookedly atop of his graying hair, 46-year-old Ben Giver presents an uh, aff affable figure. But to his detractors, the lawyer-turned-lawmaker is a pyromaniac whose po politics threatens to set the country ablaze. He says, I've changed, he told the AFP from a uh, pal uh, pal palatial apartment in Tel Aviv. When I said 20 years ago that I wanted to expel all the Arabs, I don't think that, that anymore. But I will not apologize. Can you, I mean, here he goes, I've changed, but I don't apologize. Well, part of change or part of repentance is to say you're sorry. That's a good step to take in that, that direction. So he's not going to apologize. So, you know, he's not changed then. Eh, you got to think about that. Anyway, the Times of Israel, as Netanyahu begins coalition talks, Smotrich and Ben Gavir vow to remain united. So there you have it. The man that will not apologize or anything, but he is, he is bound to stay united with the most racist politician in all of Israel's history. What a nightmare that is, right? So here you have your twin messiahs, Netanyahu, believed by many to be Netanyahu, and the other one to be Donald Trump. And Donald Trump may very well end up coming back in Trump, into power. Trump team eyes November 14th for 2024 presidential bid announcement. It says here the... Um, uh, according to the Inner Circle, is discussing announcing the launch of a 2024 presidential campaign on November 14th. Uh, Axios reported on Friday, citing three sources familiar with the discussions. And I can tell you from my own source, who was a former advisor to the President of the United States, President Donald Trump, uh, that even his son, I read the text for my, or excuse me, the, yeah, the text uh, for myself. He said, my dad doesn't want to, but he feels he's the only one that can pull the country out of the chaos that it's in. So therefore, what do I think is going to happen? I feel like that Obama, that we're going to go into, they're, they're going to get this war started. They're going to end up declaring martial law. Obama, somehow or another, they may, and this, uh, this is com completely conjecture now. Please understand. Please don't say Steve's prophesying. Totally false. I'm not prophesying. I'm looking at what could happen. And so therefore, I feel like that maybe in that case there, Obama would end up there. It'd be a door open for him to come in through martial law, become acting president of the United States. Biden clearly, even in this one here, the dementia is clearly obvious. Listen to him. Joe Biden, I'm Barack Obama's vice president. I'm Joe Biden's husband. Now, now weird. listen to that again. I mean, it's really kind of weird way he says that. I'm Barack Obama's vice president, and I'm Jill Biden's husband. I mean, look, my dad's got dementia. I actually made a statement to a friend of mine one time. I said, you know, because, you know, I, 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 I might even get the possibility of going to the White House one day. So if I ever met President Biden, I'd like to just say to him, Mr. President, listen, I, I really feel for you. My dad's 80 years old. I, I think Joe, I think. Uh, I think uh, Joe is 79. Uh, but I, was, I just want to say to him, you know, my dad's 80 years old. And, you know, he's also trying to run a big corporation with dementia. So I feel for you. I, I understand what you're going through. Just to see what he would say, right? But anyway, listen to that. Uh, so I know what dementia is like. I've seen it in my own father. Watch. My name is Joe Biden. I'm Barack Obama's Woo! vice president. Woo! And I'm Joe Biden's husband. By the way, the only reason Jill's not here today. Right? Totally the way dementia goes. So if they bring in through this martial law, they could easily bring in, you know, because Kamala, I've been told clearly, does not have, is not presidential material. She was chosen to help Biden get into office. So they could have him come in for the next two years. I was, somebody put in a comment that he could do 10 years is what he can do. So he still has two years that he could actually technically run. Therefore, the world would think the Antichrist is here. Everything is falling apart. The wars, all that kind of good stuff, right? All that's going on. And then we have Netanyahu. Netanyahu is now back in power, okay? With Netanyahu back in, back in power, let me find him again. 
uh, him coming back into power, then he would be followed by Trump two years later. Then, of course, by that time, the wars would have been settling down. Things would begin to try to calm down. And they would say, we're here to bring the peace. But the only way we can do it now, it's going to have, Israel is going to have to be the head of the new world order. They won't call it a new world order. They're going to call it something else. But the people will fall for it. Why? Because, see, the people love the Jewish people so much, they're blinded by the those that are in power are not true Israel. All right? They're not. The, 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 the leaders are sometimes the worst people on the planet. So, and I got a dog here, a little puppy. I got it for my daughter for her birthday, a little labby, black lab there, and she's a little biter and... It wants to be in my lap and everything else like a cat. Uh, anyway, so I wanted to share these things with you. And then, of course, too, on top of all this right now, too, and I want to thank Elizabeth for sending this to me, Yahoo News there. The Pope, he's there getting ready because in Israel today they're doing a, a special um, uh, world uh, or, or like a, a unity type of thing, a world unity thing. Would you stop it? Stop biting me. So says world on precipice says Pope as he meets Grand Imam in Bahrain. And, uh, you know, so I'll just kind of let this kind of play a little bit for you so you can kind of see a little bit of what, what's going on there. Uh, the Pope there meeting with the Arabic leaders there. But also, you know, Israel is not going to be left out. They're doing some kind of thing in Israel as well uh, today that is going on. So this is just all just very, 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 very bad things that are happening there. So, um I don't have time really to get into that issue there going on today. I would love to, but I just don't have the time yet. Uh, just remember, as, as John said, 1 John, he says, Little children, is the last time, and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there are many Antichrist, whereby we know that the, this is the last time. Uh, they, they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, and they went out, and they, they might be manifest, and, uh, made manifest that they were not all of us. I'm trying to get down to verse 22 is what I want to get to, really. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So all this talk about some other Messiah and stuff and what's really debilitating for me is to hear Christians saying, oh, the Messiah is coming to the Jews. He came 2,000 years ago. His love is still there for the Jewish people if they would only accept and believe that he is the Messiah. God will not share his glory with no one. He's not going to share his glory with any man or men, for that matter. He won't share his glory. All right? Jesus Christ is the one that paid it all. He is the one that was thrust through or pierced in the King James. Thrust through is what the Hebrew word actually is. And he was thrust through with the spear on, Mount, on Calvary. Uh, that's what actually allowed for his spirit to be released from his body. That's what allowed for the redemption process. That's the true tikkun olam, if you want to know the truth. Jesus Christ is that, not this nonsense that they say it is. So think about that. Uh, friends, listen, if, if God bless, blesses you and, 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 and somehow you feel that you want to bless the ministry here, I want to thank you for it. Above the video is always how you can donate by mail. Uh, Stephen Ben Noon at uh, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. Or you can just go right to our website, click there, right there online there. You can click there. It takes you right to uh, the page to be able to donate. Any credit card, debit card is fine. Uh, we thank you sincerely, and um, uh, 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 my wife has really been in a very tremendous situation. Uh, she's normally the one that helps to respond to people, but I need to take up that myself. So I will be responding very soon to, to those that have uh, been kind enough to support the work we do here. Uh, so give me about a week or so there, and I will be working on that. Uh, also, EMP Shield. I've not been talking about this much, but, and I really probably should, not just because the fact that this company does uh, contribute a little portion of your, uh, your purchase towards this ministry, but because we are seriously on the verge of a major catastrophe. 
I don't know if it's going to come to our border or not. I'm very concerned that it will. Uh, and I know that there is threat of an EMP strike uh, anytime between now and sometime mid next year. Doesn't mean that it will happen. I pray that it does not happen. But I know that from people that I do know, they say the threat level of an EMP strike is very high. Uh, and so I just encourage you. Uh, vehicle to me is the most important. If you can get it for your home as well, please do so. Uh, but every time you get something, it doesn't matter how many you get, but if you get it, like if you get the one for your car here and you go to the cart there, use the code INL50. It is a coupon code right there. If you use that coupon code, and I'm going to make sure it's big enough for you to see this. There it is, INL50 right there. Uh, and you apply that coupon, that price is going to drop $50. Okay. And then they will also contribute to us as well. If you bought five items from them, and every time you apply that coupon code, they're going to take $50 off. So if you did five items, that'd be $250 off your total order. And I don't know what you'd do with five anyway, but I'm just trying to give you an idea because they have a lot of different products there. They have them for your house, they have them for your car, your RV, your generator, your solar panels, even your ham radios, things like that. They have these things. And I would think if you're ham radio is on your house it would protect it but I don't know why there's one set aside just for that but I just wanted to share that with you regardless thank you for listening hopefully I'll have some more news for you later this evening God bless you and have a great